Breaking News, a new episode of Let's Be Frank, starting now. Hello, all. You guys know what we're doing here. It's time to talk about some really cool insects. Are you ready? I am. Let's jump into the insects. First off today, we've got the scourge of every lawn mowing citizen in the United States. Fire ants. I hate these guys with a burning passion. In the first job I ever had, maintenance at my church, I had, my, one of my jobs was going into the grass parking lots and killing all the fire ants because they were a huge problem. The, the nests would pile high. And now, because of this card, I'm learning fire ants aren't even native to America. I, I genuinely did not know this. Maybe you did. Fire ants come from South America. I don't know who brought them here. Perhaps the card will tell us in detail later. I don't know. I am furious. We should have left them over there. I, do, I hate fire ants. I'm still gonna talk about them, tell you some fun facts about them, but like, I'm sure you share my hatred. So when a fire ant decides it wants to make your day even worse, it will crawl onto you, latch on with its little pincers, and then start injecting you with as much venom as it has. It will literally pump it into your system until it is empty of venom. And those little pinchers that it's grabbing onto you with, they hurt. They are powerful for such a small creature. They can cut through the likes of telephone wire and cables. That is crazy sharp. No wonder we feel such a pain. Obviously the venom is taking its toll and making us itch. But I guarantee you, latching on like that, you feel every bit. And these guys are jerks. They leave some sort of pheromone behind that lets other ants know, hey, kill that guy. <laughs> and so they will rush at you all at once. Not just the whole colony. Sometimes a nearby colony will team up with the one that already hates you and they'll attack you together. It is a teamwork to make sure you have the worst life possible. Let me read this word for word. The fire ant's brain is a tiny knot of nerve cells that measures less than a thousandth of a millimeter across. They still have no problem figuring out how to enlarge their domain. Domain expansion. Kill that guy! On average, a queen fire ant lays about 1,500 eggs a day. And throughout her entire lifetime, she'll have created about 3 million ants with a speed of about 200 ants per hour. You know, new eggs laid. That's why these ant colonies sprang up so freaking quick. Oh my gosh, these guys are just simply the worst. I, I can't think of anything worse than a fire ant. But this is only our first insect of the day. I'm sure we'll come across something. Let's move on now to the next bug. So before we continue, I just wanted to say really quick, I tried to pick five different insects that are all very, very different from each other. There aren't gonna be like two different kinds of ants in here or three different beetles. Hopefully each insect is unique enough to where all the information doesn't seem like it's just being repeated over and over. With that being said, uh, let's go ahead and talk about our next insect, which is going to be the ornate mantis. This thing is really pretty. I, I think mantises are some of the like, prettiest insects out there. At least they can be. Like the orchid mantis, you ever seen one of those? Insane. This guy, on the other hand, the ornate mantis, he's not exactly super pretty. He's meant to be a little bit more drab so he can blend into his environment and make his prey think he's a stick. They're ambush predators, right? So they'll just watch and wait and when a prey comes into their view of their super highly sensitive eyes, they'll snap on them and start eating them immediately. Now I may be finding all these insects in the tiny terrors section, but this guy's actually a pretty decent size, six inches you can find this guy at, which hey, that's not too bad. Our ornate mantis here eats a whole host of insects. 
even other mantises. They do not discriminate. And they're so quick when going to grab their prey, they can even grab a flying insect out of the air mid-flight. That's pretty freaking impressive. And I mentioned those killer eyes earlier. When something is being still, like it's prey, when it's prey ain't moving, it, it's hard for it to see. But its eyes are super adept to, uh, to finding motion. So when something's flying by quick or, or a little insect's running by its path, that's when it can lock in and grab. Crazy. So it's not just the ornate mantis's eyes that are locked in. All of its cells can react to light. And when it turns nighttime, this bug becomes darker. So it can blend in easier when its prey can see even less. By the way, the ornate mantis gets its name from that crown looking thing at the top of its head. It's, it, it's hard to tell on the card, but it really does have something jutting out of the top of its head that is almost kind of like a crown. So I get it. I get where that comes from. But uh, let's put this mantis business behind us and move on to our next insect. I gotta find a way to do way to say that. <laughs> okay, this next insect is pretty freaky. We have the Chagas Bug. Ever seen this guy before? Let me give you a better look. I'm gonna get all the way down here really quick. Yeah, take a look at that guy. I hope you've never seen something like this before. And he is gonna make sure you never see him. Let me tell you why. Chagas Bugs, and I think I'm pronouncing that right, Chagas Bugs, uh, they attack you when you're asleep. It will crawl onto your body, onto your face, and suck your blood without you even knowing. That is worse than a mosquito, in my mind. And worse than that, the card specifically points out that it will poop on your body, and that poop can lead to infections that can cause death eventually, potentially, potentially. That seems like a worst case scenario sort of deal to me, but like still, that's terrifying. Now, if you live here in America, you shouldn't have to deal with these guys because they are mainly found in South America, Mexico, and Central America. Oh, uh, hey guys, this is Editing Frank here. So while trying to find a video of the uh, Ch Chagas Bugs, um, I I've been learning a lot more that the card didn't tell me. So they can be found and have been found in Florida. I'm in Florida. This sucks. This is terrible information to learn. Uh, th yeah, this disease is bad. They're also known as a kissing bug. Anyway, back to other me. Jeez, just the thought of laying there asleep and all of a sudden you get some blood taken from you. I don't know, do you feel it pierced your skin? Would you wake from that? Maybe if it was on your face. But if it happened maybe somewhere on your side or your like, stomach? Maybe you wouldn't even know. So these bugs really do have like a built-in straw. That little jabber needle that they have that comes out from their mouth, they keep that tucked under them until they're ready to start sucking. Then they put it out, stab, and drink. And they're gonna drink a lot. They can be sucking blood for up to like 20 minutes. And, the, and they'll drink up to 10 times their own body weight. They're gonna take a lot of blood from you. now. These guys are only like an inch big, so 10 times their body weight still doesn't seem like that much. But trust me, I'd rather have that blood in me. Once again, I'm going to read all this straight from the card because I want you to get all this information. The bite of a Chagas bug would be irritating but harmless if it weren't for the diseases they spread. These insects have a disgusting habit of expelling waste on their victim's skin when they feed. In one hole, out the other, like instantly. Chagas bugs got their name from the bacteria that causes Chagas disease, which they carry in their gut and is transferred to their victim's skin through their waste. Of course, Chagas bugs infect up to 500,000 people every year in Mexico and South America. This is a common occurrence over there. This is something that you have to worry about over there. You gotta be thinking about this. Every night before you go to bed, check for Chagas beetles. Make sure you have your anti-Chagas beetle oh, dream catcher up. I, I couldn't imagine. 
scientists say we swallow spiders when we sleep, but like, I don't know how much I believe that. This, I believe, is an actual problem. Chug is bugs. Do not mind sharing. If there is food, they will all just gather and happily suck blood. Apparently, scientists once found 7,000 Chagas bugs, all living in the same hut with a family. How? Why? Get me out of there! Oh, I couldn't imagine being surrounded by 7,000 of any bug. And I like bugs. There's so many cool beetles out there. Even I don't want to be surrounded by 7,000 of them. Even if they're harmless. Okay, I, I can't, I cannot talk about this bug anymore. Let's move on. Let's move on to the next insect. There, yeah, I did it again. I didn't think it could get any worse. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about probably the most hated insect in the world. The cockroach. Ugh. Even just saying the name, it just ugh, makes a shiver run up the spine. Cockroaches are immortal. According to the card, they were here before us, and they'll be here after us. Now look, whether or not you believe in the durability of cockroaches to outlast the human race, I'm telling you, there's something weird about them. These guys will eat practically anything. If you have a trash can that's been overflowing for like maybe a day, maybe maybe you're just waiting for the next day because you know that's the day, that's trash day, you know? Cockroaches will find it. They'll get in there, they'll eat it, they'll lay eggs. They're, they lay, when they lay their eggs, there's like a protective layer they put around them to ensure millions and millions of co baby cockroaches will carry on the legacy of hate and disgustingness. Now listen, I hate fire ants because they bite you. They'll, they'll make you itch, right? I hate those frickin' Chagas bugs we just talked about because they suck your blood and they poop all over you. But somehow, even though they don't bite you, they don't, they, you know, they try their best to stay away from humanity. They, they, they just stick to the corners and crevices of your home. Cockroaches. They still have to be one of the worst insects on the planet. The, the grossest, the most hated. I just don't like them, and I know you don't like them either. Ugh. I don't know if you've ever touched a cockroach before, but apparently there's like this protective coating over their body that makes them feel slick. It's like waxy and oily. I, I have, the only time I've touched a cockroach is when I've touched it with the bottom of a flip-flop. I just smack it. I don't even like step it on them and the shoes on my foot. I gotta smack them. Oh, they make that crunching sound. So cockroaches can get about like two inches long, which, you know, that's, that makes sense. That's reasonable. They live in every part of the planet. You can find them on every continent, except for maybe Antarctica. They don't live in the coldest parts of the earth. They, it needs to be decently warm, you know, but besides that, they're everywhere. Cockroaches, are, they look like that for a reason, right? They have very flat bodies, so it's easy for them to crawl under small spaces. Like, if there's, if there's a crack, there's a crevice somewhere, a cockroach can fit underneath. That's just how they're built. And they have all these fine little hairs on their legs so they can uh, detect vibration so they can sense you coming maybe before you even see that the cockroach is there. Hey, speaking of those legs, they are muscular. When I think of a cockroach, I don't exactly think about muscular. Their muscular legs allow them to run sometimes faster than we can even catch up to them. They can be slit, sliding under something before we can even make it across the room. And let me just leave you with this. Cockroaches are unaffected by radiation. So just in case you thought, well, I don't know, if a global nuclear war breaks out, at least cockroaches will be gone from the world. No, they will likely survive a nuclear, a global nuclear war. They will outlast humanity, guaranteed. 
Let's squish these bugs and move on to our final insect of the day. I promise you, they may not be as gross as cockroaches, but they're still pretty bad. And our final insect is the skunk beetle. I had to include a beetle because they are my favorites. Uh, this beetle though, I'm not, a, I'm not a fan of him. I don't want to encounter this beetle. Let me tell you, he spends his days feasting on rotten food, and he specifically looks for the real gnarly stuff. Because if a predator starts coming after him to eat him, he can convert that nasty rotten food into some sort of super stinky chemical that he sprays on his predator and that makes them lose their appetite for him, you know? That's why they're called skunk beetles. Now, unlike the vast majority of beetles, skunk beetles cannot fly. That little, the, the little shell on its back that can normally open up to reveal the wings, yeah, that's fused together. I don't know why, but it is. But thankfully, there is an, a, a good side to this, an upside. It allows them to take a bit more pressure being attacked by a predator. It makes their, their exoskeleton a bit stronger, so good for them. The skunk beetle is about an inch and a half long and can be found throughout deserts in the western United States and, once again, Mexico. A lot of the insects today can be found in Mexico. So our skunk beetle friend here, he is a nocturnal insect. He's only gonna come out to search for food and stuff if the sun is down, because that in the deserts, that sun is scorching, and all the predators are asleep. If it does, however, encounter a predator, it thankfully has that defensive move. But his hind legs are exceptionally long, so he can, I'm not gonna do it for you, but like, he can, put his butt up in the air because the, the, the legs are a lot longer than his front so they can go higher. He puts his butt in the air in order to shoot up the spray. That makes sense, right? Did you know there is another insect that adopts that posture? It's the darkling beetle. It has the exact same posture where it sticks its butt up at its predator and gets ready to fire, only it's shooting blanks because it can't shoot a stinky spray. It just does what its cousin does to hopefully scare the predator away. So it's kind of, it's kind of stealing some thunder from it. But, nah, but what are you gonna do? But I think that's enough with the stinky beetle. And I think we can call that the end of this episode. If you guys enjoyed, please leave it a like. And hey, subscribe if you have not already. Dude, subscribers have been popping off lately. Thank you so much for all your support. I really appreciate it. And if you want more videos like this, please comment down below. Do you like when I stick to one specific type of creature or do you prefer when I fan out? I try and go back and forth just in case. Um, hey, follow my Instagram and Facebook, Lester Frank 2020 That is where you can learn if I am not able to post on a Saturday or something like that. And of course, follow Joe and I's podcast, Certified Poke Moments, on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. If you like Pokemon, you're gonna love this podcast. Oh, and hey, it's right here on YouTube too. If you prefer to use YouTube for podcasts, by all means stay here. But remember, if you wanna listen while you go, you've also got Spotify and Apple Podcasts to help you out. With all that being said, once again, thank you so very much for watching. Until next time.